So welcome back to another SUP Border video. In this video, we're gonna be reviewing the SIC Okeanos. We've been using this board for quite a while. We've done several touring features and also SUP Border Pro features with this board. But this is the review. If you're looking for a super stable touring board or just getting some faster paddling this year, then this video is definitely well worth checking out. So the full specifications for this board we've been testing. This is the 14 foot version by 28 inches wide. It comes in a 305 liters in volume. It weighs 14.6 kilograms when we weighed it. It comes as standard with the SIC full carbon race fin and it retails at 1,695 pounds, 1,699 euros or $1,899. There are a few other sizes in the Okeanos range. They make a 12 6 by 29, a 12 foot 6 by 27, and an 11 foot by 28. So a quick summary about where the Okeanos has come from. The Okeanos has come from the fastest race boards that SIC make, the RS, the rocket ship. It's a very good all-round race board for flat water, open water, downwinding. We've reviewed that board and we've used it in the surf and downwind in lots of different conditions. It has very much a similar shape and specifications to the RS, especially the 14 foot by 28, but it is designed for a different sort of paddling. This is the touring, fast cruising side of the market. The RS really is still aiming for the more performance, fast paddling. And looking at the materials of this board, this is the glass composite plus negra. Basically, a negra is a very good glass that can take impact resistance very well. A lot of brands are putting it in their boards now, and it is a very strong material to put into the board. Apart from that, this board has an EPS foam core. It's got multiple layers of fiberglass. It's got a oak veneer on the top and the bottom, which is what you can see through the top of the board. And that just gives the board a bit more stiffness. And again, with the Enegra, it makes the overall board very hard wearing. So let's have a look at the fittings you get on this board, then move on to the shape and then talk about what it's like on the water. So the fitting straight away, you've got a nice wide EVA deck pad right to the back of the board and it's filled right out to the side of the board as well. It gives you loads of area to stand and obviously if you're trimming up and down the board, it's really nice that it's pretty much everywhere. The board is also has a recessed deck, so the EVA sits nicely in the recess. Every time you recess a deck, you're basically lowering your center of gravity and you're becoming more stable when you stand on the board, which is why all performance race boards have more sunken down decks. And that's what they've done with this SIC too. You've got bungee cargo straps up at the front there, and you've also got the same size bungee cargo straps at the back. In the middle of the board, you've got SIC's trademark easy grab handle, which is really big and comfy. Still one of the most comfortable handles on the market, I think. And the general look of the board, especially up towards the nose, where you can see the oak veneer coming through, is absolutely beautiful. The graphics with the waves and the styling and how they've put all their logos on the board really is A1. It is a stunning and very eye-catching board, and a lot of the subboarder team really like this design. So before we turn this board over, let's have a look at the outline shape. So 14 foot long, 28 inches wide. It's actually quite parallel, quite wide, all the way down to the tail of this board. And there is a fair amount of width all the way up towards the nose. Unlike some of the touring boards on the market, where they're more pulled in towards the nose or generally pulling in a bit more towards the back of the tail, this board is quite thick throughout the whole of its width. And that really does offer a lot more in the stability, but we'll talk about that in a minute. The top of the board at the front and the nose shape is something very similar you see on race boards. It's a wave displacing nose. Because of that nose shape, it is quite a dry board. You don't really get any water that comes over the deck and into the standing area, which is great. So turning the board over and looking at the bottom of the board, the board actually looks very simple and there's not really much going on, but actually there is quite a lot of design characteristics going on this board. For a start, the rocker line, it's got a nice amount of nose rocker and it's got a small amount of tail kick, which then makes it able to paddle in all water states. Very much similar to the RS, the rocket ship, the member of the full on race board. Up at the very front of the board, you've got a V, which is there to actually guide the water and part it from either side of the board. It's great for straight line tracking, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Just back from the V, you've got a slight curved shape here, which obviously displaces the water from left to right. And then moving back about a meter and a half from the nose of the board, you've got a completely flat section. And then coming back again, very slightly, you've got a slight depression or a concave forming in the middle of the board. And as we go again, 
you've got a slight concave getting a little bit more pronounced in the middle of the board but the side of the boards are flat really what's happening is the water is being channeled down to the middle of the board to the center of the board helps about the stability and it forces the water back towards the fin really trying to give you a fast slender shape but still offer a good amount of stability then focusing at the back section of the board, there's some things that are very different from other boards in the market. For a start, it's got quite a big square tail that's there to help the water release off the back of the board really smoothly and not slow you down at all. It's obviously, because of that square tail, you have more width at the back of the board there, which again, helps with the stability. Really though, the fin setup is something very different. You get a lovely, beautiful 12K SIC 8.3 inch weedless race fin. It's a beautiful fin. It's the same fin that comes with the bullets and the RS boards. Nice to see it on this board. And also they fitted the board with FCS2 fin boxes at the sides of the boards. That is a really neat feature. So if you're running in shallow water, you can take out the center fin. You could use maybe two little stubby eight centimeter fins, four inch fins on the side there if you're running in shallow water. Or if you want to, you can even run it as a twin fin and not have a center fin at all. It's great for experimenting, playing around, gives you that option, and also using some of your standard surf fins in a touring fast cruising board. But bear in mind, it only comes as standard with the center SIC 12K carbon fin. So putting all that together, what does it paddle like on the water? Well, one thing that really comes out when we're paddling this is how easy and comfortable this board is to paddle. I think generally because it's 28 wide and it's quite thick, quite wide all the way towards the tail, it offers you that great amount of stability. It's not the fastest of touring boards because it isn't pulled in towards the tail, so you have got a little bit more drag going back towards the board, but they have given you a nice square tail to release the water as much as possible. But being a super fast board isn't really the be all and end all especially when you're talking about touring and putting some weight on the board stability is a really important thing and because it's nice and stable and it's still got some width up there at the nose it can take a large amount of weight again because of that wider tail it's really easy to move around the board it's great for your step back turns or maybe even walking up and down the board to get into downwinding and also it's very easy to paddle in a straight line you haven't really got to think about it and this is because of a few reasons one because of the parallel rails going all the way back to the squarer tail but really it's to do with the nose the v under the nose there that v is a bit more of a guide it, it plants in the water keeps it very straight and true and tracks you in a straight line especially in the flat water conditions very easy to keep going and tracking on those long distance flat water paddles so it's definitely one of the most stable touring boards that we've tested, but who do we think it would be best suit, ability and weight range? Well, weight range, you are gonna be able to get a large amount of weight on this board or be able to paddle it being a heavy rider up to 130 kilos quite happily. Or if you're a lighter person, it could easily carry more weight to go touring and exploring. So looking at the ability of paddler to ride this board, well, because it's nice and stable and it's relatively wide throughout the whole of the board, you're going to be able to jump on this board, even if you've only had two or three sub lessons and you weigh around the sort of sub 80, 85 kilograms. If you're a bit heavier, obviously more intermediate paddlers will get more out of this board, but it is a very easy board to paddle. So it is a wide range of abilities that are going to suit this board. What you're going to use it for? This is where it gets quite interesting because obviously it's designed for touring and it is going to be able to take you touring. It is going to suit very much a big range of people wanting to do fast cruising, river cruising, trying to make maybe have a wider base board than a race board, something that's a little bit more stable, really pushing towards a bigger, faster cruising market, but still having the ability to go touring. You could even get into downwinding with this board because there is a lot of stability around the back when you start moving around the board, maybe even sup fishing. It'd be a great board for sup fishing too. So looking at pros and cons and value for money, well, one of the biggest pros has got to be the look, styling, and the finish of the board. Lovely finish board with a really well thought out, beautiful graphic. Another pro is the outline shape and the wideness at the tail is going to really offer a good paddling board for the heavier base riders that want to get, to get into touring or paddling fast. Actually going to bring in value for money on that pro as well because it is a fairly competitive price point at £1,695. There are lots more touring boards in the market that cost a lot more than this and we really like the fin setup and the option that they've given you to have the ability to run it with two FCS fins. 
And looking at cons, well the bungees at the front and the back are relatively well placed. Maybe the back one could be further forward, but it's a shame they're not just a little bit bigger. It's not a shame there's not one more attachment here. So you could have maybe six attachments instead of four attachments at the front there to get a bigger bungee in there so you could put more cargo because this board can carry quite a lot of weight. So that is one of the negatives. Another thing that I've heard a few people talk about is the weight of the board. Now actually this is it's definitely not a lightweight board at 14.6 kilos, but you've also got to bear in mind, we have tested other touring boards from other brands and they've been over a kilo heavier than this. Okay, so it's not a light, lightweight board by any means, but it's not the heaviest board in the market. And bear in mind, this is a big board. This is a 14 foot board by 28. It's got a lot of thickness, it's got a lot of volume, and there's a lot of materials in it. So it isn't the lightest of boards, but it isn't also the heaviest of boards either. But another thing you need to be aware of when you buy this board, it could be a con, but it's more of an observation, is that the no shape of this board, it works really, really well on flat water. Because of that V right under the nose of the board, it makes the board track and travel in a straight line really easily. The downside to having a more of a pronounced V right at the front of the board is that if you're paddling maybe in chop or off wind, you're not paddling dead into wind or away from the wind, the nose of the board can catch and wants to ride into the bump or away from the bump and it can make controlling the board in choppier conditions a little bit harder. The way to sort of fix that and make you be able to paddle in choppy conditions is to trim yourself around the board to bring the nose up a little bit. Opposed to some more all water race boards like the RS, they haven't got that V under the nose. So there, if you want to trim and pull the nose across the wave or across the water, it doesn't catch or dig in. The downside then to something like the RS is it isn't as easy to paddle in a straight line. So that's definitely something to be aware of. If you're paddling this board in flat waters, lakes, canals, estuaries, it's gonna be a beautiful board to paddle all of the time. If you're using it in more open water states, you're gonna to have to trim the board a little bit more to bring the nose up, and it'll be a little bit easier to paddle because of that. It's just an observation, but it's definitely something you need to be aware about if you're gonna buy this board. So I hope that SUP board review has helped you if the SIC Okeanos is the board for you. It's a beautiful board that is gonna suit a lot of people and it's gonna get a lot of people on the water and get them into touring and exploring, which is absolutely fantastic. If you're starting to get into touring, make sure to check out Will's video series about touring. And also I'll be doing a bit more on this board in the SUP board pro video. And remember, if you're looking to buy a board and you need to find a trusted retailer, check out our SUP board, a trusted retailer page. And thank you very much for sending us all your trusted retailer recommendations. It's great to hear who you think the best shops are all around the world. Keep an eye on YouTube, check out SUP Border Mag, of course, and also SUP Border Pro. We'll see you next time with another video. Thank you very much.